Welcome back, everybody. My name is Mr. Llama, and this is going to be game two of the possible best of three. Not quite sure. I just know there are three games that I'm going to be casting here between EG Idra and OGS Supernova. So spawning up here in the top right corner of Shakira's Plateau, we do have OGS's Old Generation's Supernova, and spawning down in the bottom left corner, Evil Genius Genius's Idra. So, OGS Supernova able to take out take that last game from Idra. Um, goes 1-0 up on him, and I'm not even sure if they were playing a series or if they just played each other a lot, as they are Grandmasters players, and of course you can just constantly keep matching up with players. But, it looks like they will be playing um, a few more games here. So, Supernova, yes, able to take that game on Tall Dareem with some great play, uh, abusing that cliff that Tall Dareem has over there. And, of course, this is not the cliff, but, you know, he did build a few bunkers over here. Turrets, tanks, etc. Have those uh, bunkers filled with marines and just created a little battle station right outside of Idra's natural that he was able to siege up, do enough damage, and Idra t tried to counter with some lings and mutas and was able to be a little bit, little, little bit, sorry about that, a little bit successful. Um, but in the end, was just overtaken by the mass amount of marines with stem there at the. Uh, natural of OGS Supernova when EG Idra did go for that final push uh, counterattack of his. So OGS um, taking that first game. And it looks like right here, possibly not getting a gas. No, so we may see a one Rax expand out of OGS Supernova here in this game too, which is not uncommon, especially on this map, as the ramp is just so, so small right here. Uh, the difference though is as a Zerg player, you cannot take that extremely, extremely fast third. We do see Idra going for that 15 supply. But as a Zerg player, if you see your opponent open with that um, fast, fast expansion, and yes, it looks like he is pocketing those minerals, so he will be going for that expand. If you do see your opponent drop down that expansion that fast, sometimes it's tempting to just say, oh, well, I'm going to throw up a third. But as of now, nobody has really figured out how to quite do that since the Terran player can still make a nice little push out with those Marines and SCVs. Uh, so it kind of forces you to stay on two bases for a little bit longer than you would want. And I, of course, was talking about the uh, three base Losira. I think he's the one who started doing the uh, three base extremely, extremely fast third in ZVP. So cannot quite... Uh, do that, but it looks like Idra not taking that early gas as he did in the previous game. So he scouted and saw his opponent was not gassing there at the very beginning, right after that rack. So he knows, for the most part, unless there was some sort of proxy rack somewhere else for a two racks, he knows that his opponent uh, was going to be taking that early expand and not getting out any sort of fast reactor hellions. So of course you do not need gas. Uh, because you don't need speed for your lings to deal with that, or roaches, or anything of that nature. So a lot of players, of course, opt to just stay with those drones, as if you do have the drones, you get more minerals, and more minerals is faster economy, um, as you can build more drones when you have more drones, so that, of course, makes sense. So Idra pumping out that third queen, of course, right there to start his creep spread. Always a smart play. As a uh, Zerg player, you want to have your creep spread continually moving out, and you want to get that started extremely early. And here we go. It does look like OGS Supernova possibly going for a little push. No, going to back up his Marines. Four Marines, not the strongest uh, to start. If you have a bigger ball, you know, like eight, nine Marines, that can do a lot more damage. But four Marines right there. Uh, Idra would be able to scout it, would be able to produce some links of his own and be able to take out those marines extremely quickly and that would leave OGS Supernova not in the best position as he only has that one bunker and four marines defending his base. In the meantime he is going to go for reactor hellions but they will be of course a little bit later than normal as he did wait to build that and we do have a couple more barracks coming down. And look at the gas that we have stockpiled right now for our Terran player. So I'm a little confused as to why he's stockpiling so much gas right now. We're going to have to see what tech he exactly does push up into. Um, it's possible he's just going to go for some sort of mass upgrades right here. Possibly throw down a couple tech labs, get that stim upgrade out, uh, get combat shields going, concussive shells, and even then he'll still have some leftover gas. So a little bit uh, curious play right there from our Terran player. 
And does he start that stem? Yes, he does. So stem research going down. A reactor. Uh, a couple reactors, but still a lot of gas. And of course, you can't make any gas units. I have a factory when it does have this reactor on it. So it looks like OGS Supernova going to go ahead and just try and prevent this creep spread from going down. We do not see a Roach Warren for our Zerg player here, Idra. So, but two Evolution Chambers. So he's starting on extremely fast upgrades. It looks like as soon as he gets another 100 gas, I would assume. Yep, there we go. So he's going to have the plus one, plus one for his links fairly soon, which is a very smart play. And uh, OGS Supernova, likes to go, ahead, go ahead and go ahead and scout for that third. And as a Zerg player, if you do scout that Reactor Hellion coming down a little bit later off of this expansion, that is the time that you can take your third. So usually I like to get a Roach Warren if I'm going to be taking my third that early. So I'll get a Roach Warren, pump out like four or five Roaches, um, and then a few links, and that right there is enough to deal with any of these Hellions, keep them off the creep. And not only does that give you enough time to uh, get a third down, but allows you to spread your creep out as well a lot further, which, of course, as I said before, as a Zerg player you want to do because you do get that vision, you do get that speed uh, boost on the creep, and it makes it, ex and your opponent can't build any bunkers or anything like that. So I like what Idra is doing right here, throwing these creep tumors up behind, so he will be able to pop a creep tumor up there, I would imagine. If he can get an Overlord over there for Vision, I believe that would allow him to jump a Creamer up onto that. It looks like Ling's going to come out here and be able to sound surround four of these Hellions. So nice little Ling run by there from Idra. Able to do a decent amount of damage, but uh-oh, we do have to be careful as there is going to be double drops coming out from our Terran player, OGS Supernova. He is as well as throwing down this engineering base, so he's going to try and go for some upgrades. It looks like Idra going to go ahead and try and snipe off these remaining Hellions, and yes, he will be able to do that, so taking a little bit of losses, but he's going to have to be careful as he does not have vision from these watchtowers, since that is what happens when Hellions are on the map, and you do not have roaches or anything like that. So he's not going to spot these drops until they are already in his main. He's going to be have to be extremely careful as I'm not sure this is enough links he does have a few more links on the way so this possibly will be able to clean this up yes it looked like it will stim has gone down though and the links finally streaming in and a lot of links were in production so OGS Supernova going to have to pick this up yes he will so not able to do too much damage he does supply block Idra with that uh kill on the overlord but Hydra getting burrow with that baneling nest infestation pit so it looks like we are going to be seeing some burrowed infestors running around the map and hopefully some burrowed baneling bombs as well always extremely fun to see um, and that's just not something you see uh, very often or as often as I feel like you should and yes you will have you know people are like oh you lose supply if you have some baneling bombs burrowed here and here so you have like 9 10 supply around the map that can't be with your army but just the amount of damage that three banelings can do when you have 30 marines walk right over them and you blow it up i mean that can be huge that can be game changing or game ending so OGS supernova going to be going for a push here as Idra is picking up uh his third base and we're going to see have to see what exactly he does it looks like he's going to try and destroy his destructible rocks and once again go for that ledge abuse which is so 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 common on Shakira's plateau so from tall dream altar to Shakira's plateau the ledge abuse uh, just constant here by OGS supernova and it looks like we're going to see some sort of counterattack possibly from our zerg player Idra but is not going to be able to break into the base here and he's going to have to back up yes as there is a sieged up tank there so Idra going to be in a little bit of a difficult situation here he does have a few bane links but most of his army is stuck in these links does he have any any infestors out on the pitch yet we'll have to see he does have five infestors yes he does so where exactly are they i'm not quite sure there they are so they just popped so he will be able to drop some fungus over here if, and the lings will be able to stream in from behind so he can get a great surround on this army it looks like he will be able to do a lot of damage right here he's going to have this these infestors fungling all of that army and the lings decide to pull back at the last second i'm not quite sure that was intentional no that was a huge mistake by idra so he accidentally A clicked right up here with those links, so they ran all the way around instead. And it looks like Idra going to be in a little bit of trouble now as all of his army is down here on this low ground, so he's not going to be able to snipe too much on the high ground. He will be able to take out most of this army, I would imagine. Yes, that is going to be enough links to do a lot of damage, able to take out these tanks 
possibly, but the tank's doing so much damage with all that splash and itch. Are going to be in a little bit of trouble, but finally going to be able to clean up this army. So, Supernova going to have to back away. It looks like this turret going to go down, and a bunker remaining unfinished. There's no CV, but here we go. Supernova has built up a second army, so already ready for that push, and EG Idra, a little bit behind, does not have this third saturated at all, so he's going to be in a little bit of trouble. And how many infestors does he have on the field now? He only has one infestor left, four more in production, but will it be in time? And we'll have to see if Supernova does continue to try for this ledge abuse right here. It looks like that is what he's going for. As the creep said, for Idra is really good right now, pushing out across this map. So if he were going to try and engage on this, it would just take too long of a push. So yes, it's going to try and once again push over here. And Idra looking to go for some sort of counter. He will be able to snipe off this planetary fortress or force a cancel and lift before it can do anything. Yes, so some SCVs coming over here. And no, the Marine's actually going to come over with the SCVs and possibly be able to do enough damage. In the meantime, tanks have sieged up in the main, so he is going to get a nice fungal right there, going to be able to kill off that medevac, so those marines are now trapped in the base, unless another medevac does come rescue them. And Idra able to do a decent amount of damage, but the planetary fortress does finish, so he will not be able to uh, get in there and kill it off, and is going to start mining. We'll have to see if Idra... Uh, what exactly he can do is he does he is low on those minerals. He's only at 60 workers It is ahead of his opponent But of course his opponent has this great abuse with this ledge right here that he can use so fungals go down some infested terrans are thrown out and it has to be careful as his oh, His infestors were in siege range right there So the bunker is going to load up it's going to be taken out very quickly and it looks like EG Itch are going to once again be able to clean this up able to take out the tanks able to take out the Marines so nice job by Idra, able to finally pull through there and clean up both of those armies. And he finally does have a Spire going down as well as this Lair morphing into a Hive tech. So Spire plus Hive going down at the same time usually is an indicator that there will be Broodlord sometime in the future. And actually the Spire just finished. So a lot of times you will see players throw those down together as they do take the exact same time I believe to build Spire and uh, Hive so you can instantly morph it into a Greater Spire as soon as you build it so that is just one sort of timing to be aware of and it looks like Supernova gonna go on the defensive a little bit here more as he needs to drone up and he's going to try and go for some sort of drop is Itcher going to be able to snipe it no he will not so he's not going to get any fungals there but Itcher taking his fourth possibly going to be taking his fifth soon as well we'll have to see exactly what it is to decide and Supernova still just content on these three bases he has almost mined out of his main and his natural is about halfway down so he is mining extremely heavy from this third base but Idra also in the same situation uh, both players just going to be on these one and a half bases possibly two bases if, and Idra saying I don't want to have to deal with this anymore he's throwing up sport crawlers he's throwing up spine crawlers and he's going to try and keep his opponent away from doing any more of that cliff abuse right there so possibly a small push coming out here from OGS Supernova it is going to be scouted by EG Itra here so he's going to have to be careful of drops which I'm sure he is aware of uh, since he did see those medevacs with those units right there so it's possible that there could just be some sort of drop right up here it looks like Itra gonna go ahead and try and engage this army and OGS Supernova just going to pick up and run away as he does not really want anything to do with this but OGS Supernova able to force a cance right here while he was distracting the army able to pull it out to this watchtower and snipe off that fourth so that is going to be extremely difficult for Idra and now Idra of course going to have to take a fourth right here instead in the meantime OGS Supernova already has his fourth about five seconds from completion and throwing down a fifth command center as well so extra minerals throwing down those CC's not a bad idea orbitals of course giving you um great uh you get mules you get more scans and then you can make planetaries out here in the later game with them if you don't make them into orbitals any of those extra minerals which is just makes it extremely hard for a t zerg player to break so we'll have to see exactly what idra is going for he is getting that greater spire just finishing up now his three three upgrades have gone down so idra about to be three three lings with the general glands versus opponents two two and 3-3 unstarted. Um, so EG Itra going to be a little bit ahead in those upgrades and these tanks only going to be getting a plus one uh, in about 100 seconds. 
But cloak going down, is that ghost cloak or is that banshee cloak? It says personal cloaking, which one is that? Ghost cloaking, yes, so we are going to see nukes coming out from OGS Supernova. So possible nuke play. And right here, as you can see, Supernova having to siege up on the outside of this creep and slowly push in. So this is why it's important to have that creep spread. Um, as it just doesn't allow them to walk in and just kill off all your bases immediately. And the Broodlords are out, and I do not think there are any Vikings yet on the field. And while he will have those ghosts, ghosts uh, have gotten that reduced snipe ability. So it's now gone down from, what, 50 damage to 25 damage, I believe. So it takes twice as many snipes, barely even worth it. Just useful to have on the those EMPs for the Infestors. But here we go, six Broodlords going to start pushing their way across the map. Actually, more than that, eight Broodlords. How many are on the field in total? Yes, eight Broodlords. Another Corruptor right there in case he wants to morph. And the Vikings count is at two. So it looks like OGS Supernova going to be in a little bit of trouble here. As he cannot do too much, but he is going for a huge drop into the main. And Itra's army is all straight out here on the front. So he will be able to take out a lot, take out this hive possibly take out the spawning pool and do a lot of damage in the meantime though Itcher just gonna push forward it does not look like he's really sending that much back at all just a few lings right here to try and clean this up but of course that army is too strong so he's just gonna try and push in and do game ending damage to his opponent his opponent is supply block so he will not be able to remake those units and more supply depots are going down for him so he is becoming extremely supply blocked and it is going to take a long time to try and remaster. In the meantime, Itcher going to try and clean this up. He does have the Corruptors focusing down those medevacs. So very smart player right there. So they cannot just load up and run away. And Itcher able to clean that up with his 3-3 upgrades and his Adrenal Glands. In the meantime, Itcher pushing into the base with these Broodlords. Still not enough Vikings on the field. Only two Vikings. A nuke is in production. Or it's already been completed. So we will have to see if that nuke is going to go down any time and be able to do the damage that it needs to do. It does throw down the nuke so we're going to, have to see what it does does it just see this nuke yes it does look like he does so he will be able to move away from this if he can get his broodlords out of there yes so that nuke will be wasted not going to be able to do any damage maybe a little bit there nope so no damage done from that nuke and OGS Supernova in an extremely difficult position right now. The Vikings are out, but there are so many Infestors right here. They're just going to be able to fungal them, chain fungal them, get the Corruptors over there. And this does not look good for OGS Supernova. He does siege up, so he's able to do a decent amount of damage. But huge fungal goes off, able to collect almost all those Marines into it. And the Broodlord's going to push in, start sniping off these tanks. And OGS Supernova just falling into a worse and worse position as these Broodlords doing so much damage. The Infestors all still right there below him to kill off any sort of air that does try and pressure. And OGS Supernova just mining off this one base, losing a lot of supply, losing a lot of his supply depots. And I'm not quite sure if we'll be able to see Supernova defend this. He does have a couple ghosts around the field that are going to try and snipe. They're able to snipe off one of the Infestors right there. The plus three upgrades are going down for OGS Supernova. But EJ Idra once again remaxing, and he is 161 out of 200 over his opponent's 102 out of 142. And you have to remember, he is also in such a great position for attacking right here. His opponent trying to make uh, some Vikings. It looks like no, his starport was destroyed, so he is not going to be able to make any more Vikings. He just has the one Viking left on the field, and that is probably not going to be enough. Idra needs to make sure his Broodlords are attacking. The Marines are going to stem forward here, able to pick off one of these Broodlords, possibly. Yes, it looks like they will get one Broodlord, but the Fungal is going to go down. Able to chain Fungal a lot of these units, able to get that Viking in it as well. And the Corruptors do come out, so they will take out the Viking, be able to take out these Medivacs. And EG Itch are just in such a promising position. Supernova is just slipping. This game is slipping away. And GG from Supernova. That is going to be game two. So it looks like, yes, this was a best of three played between the two players. And EG Idra able to take game two. And a come from behind for sure as he lost a... Uh, he was down after all of this stuff right here. This cliff would be just so hard to deal with, and he lost a lot of units from that. But uh, he stayed with it. He was able to get his third up and mining from that eventually. And great transition there into the Broodlord tech. Um, able to really just make a great push there across the map with those Broodlords and do a lot of damage. And that was like perfect timing on it because 
If he did not have Broodlords in those army, that would have been so much more difficult for him to deal with. But of course, Broodlords, if your opponent does not see them, does not have Vikings, can force him completely out of position because if there are no Vikings, uh, they generally cannot sit there and siege tanks blow up the Broodlings, which of course are standing right next to your army. So you have to unsiege, and that requires a withdraw, and E.G. Idra able to ride that withdraw to a win. So 1-1, I am Mr. Lama, and I will see you guys in the last game here.